Yeah. Well, welcome to segment two. Um, and in our first segment of our four part segments, uh, we talked about awareness. We talked about different things that you go through um, during this pandemic or any big changes in your life. And this is a complete health and wellness 360 that we're looking into. So awareness was the first segment. So if you are coming into segment two, if you wanna see the first one, go check that one out first before you come to this one, or you can, you can start right here. But today we're gonna to be talking about reality check. And I'm lucky enough to have Rob Morrow here again with us to kind of go through that. So Rob, when you say, when we say reality check, what does that really kind of mean? Well, I think what it means is, uh, as people have experienced all the emotions and dislocation that we talked about, uh, I think it, it helps to try to really understand the, the depth and nature and severity of what we're, what we're dealing with. In other words, uh, just sizing it, if you will. I mean, what is, you know, what is, what is the scope of, of what all of us are being asked to deal with? And I think, I think if we don't have a, the proper scope and respect for it, I think the chances are unlikely we're gonna navigate it successfully. So I think this is really about just level setting. What, what's really going on here? Definitely. And, and so um, a couple of words come to mind, at least in my experience and those people that I'm talking to, that uh, this pandemic uh, at a minimum is very profound, it's very prolonged, it's very serious, and the, the level of, of social dislocation that has gone on and is going on has been devastating. And I think that perspective, and that doesn't sound very nice, and I, I, I regret that it's this serious, but I think it is. And I, and I think that's where Donovan and I really came up with this, the name of the segment, which is Reality Check. Uh, because I, I think if we can appreciate the depth of this, and that we're in uncharted waters, that it, it enables you to say, okay, maybe this is why I'm struggling so badly. You know, it's, I'm not just, crazy here, you yeah. know, this, this is really difficult stuff. And so as we think about, uh, you know, the fact that there've been 15 million cases in the United States, there've been 295,000 deaths and climbing, uh, the level of unemployment is, yeah. is skyrocketing. Uh, the number of business failures is I think gonna be devastating again. Uh, the economic impact is gonna be cascading. Yeah. Uh, this gap between the haves and the have-nots is going to grow, uh, which is already wide. It's going to get wider. And so I think we're just in for a, a, a difficult period. And I think if we know that going in, uh, we have a better chance of, uh, of, of dealing with it in a really effective way uh, that, makes us, that gives us a chance to feel better about ourselves and about our community. So. I think this is really time to buckle up. Yeah. And uh, you know, what we're finding is this is not a dress rehearsal. This is, this is the real deal. Yeah. And uh, so Donovan, I know you've uh, observed, uh, not in every one of our clients, but in many of our clients, where this is starting to show up, where, what parts of their life are being affected. You know, so if you take out a pen and paper and you kind of write down some of the things that are um, where this is showing and where I've seen it shown within clients and within um, friends and um, employees and is and loved ones is what's affecting them where does it show it shows in their physical abilities or their physical um, makeup their emotional makeup professionally financially and also uh, socially um, and, and if you look at those those segments I'll repeat them again physical emotional professional, financial, social. If you write those down and give them a little bit of space, we'll kind of talk about what are those things, and we'll give some examples uh, in each category, but what are some of the things that are happening to you in those categories or friends you know or somebody that you really care about? What is happening in those segments um, that has been life-changing? Um, and, and sometimes it might seem subtle, you know, you might want to, you know, give yourself a, uh, you know, it's, it's only five pounds that I've gained or things like that. But, you know, if you, if you get into the weeds and you get into the, you know, 
from a physical standpoint as a trainer, how that additional five pounds can affect your sleep, can affect um, your confidence, how it can affect uh, just general your hormonal levels. It's, it, it's no longer not a big deal, um, especially when your routine has been broken as we've gone through an awareness. You mentioned physical. Yeah. You know, emotional is certainly one. Uh, I talk to people all the time. I experience it myself. Uh, you know, frustration, your uh, your level of anxiety. Uh, people are having to cancel plans. Yeah. You 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 were hoping you could do. You could hoping you could take this trip. You can't. You're hoping your family might come for a holiday. They can't. And I think the the emotions of this is just at a minimum, this has been a roller coaster. And the other place I think where the emotions is uh, coming in is that there have been at least two or three times during the pandemic where you know people thought we were seeing light at the end of the tunnel. And you know we're in all likelihood going to spill well into next year. Yes. So this thing is going to at a minimum have a one year life, if not longer. And so that's stressful yes. and that's 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 tough you know it was interesting i mean like as you were talking about some of the emotional pieces of you know um we're recording this around the holidays and typically every christmas since i've been in california for 13 years i've been able to go back east where you know my, my family's in atlanta my, my parents and my wife's family's in the northern virginia dc area and this is going to be the first year that we're actually going to spend Christmas here in California. And, uh, and we booked our flight and we decided to cancel, you know, as, as we saw what was happening. And, but it, it does mess with your emotions of, you know, something that you look forward to all year. I'm talking to my, my mother who, you know, we do every other year. And she's, she has grandkids and she, she loves seeing them. One of her favorite times is seeing them during the holidays since it's every other year that she gets to see them for, for Christmas. And she's gonna miss out potentially on two years before she can get, um, you know, God willing, get that, that feeling back of, of having her grandkids uh, around her on Christmas morning. Yeah, so You can almost see the debate. Is this my year? Does this year count? Yeah, or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that, uh, do I and, lose my turn? You know, and that's, that's, his, own, that's his own thing. That's, uh, that is also a piece. But so when you look at that, that's definitely the emotional side. And um, from the professional side, I mean, I think I deal with it probably from a, personal, but also working with employees or people who I've interviewed for different, luckily we've been able to still hire people. So we've been interviewing different candidates for different positions that we have and, and talking to them what their experience is. What, what are some of the things you've noticed from a professional standpoint that your, your clients have gone through? Well, there, there are lots of manifestations of it. Uh, some of the most obvious are contractions of hiring, yep. you know, people that expected to, you know, they were offered a job, the job was taken away because of the cutback. But I think probably the, the most pervasive and systemic uh, change universally, worldwide, is this working remotely. Mm. So even, even if you've got your job, many, many people are working remotely. And I think that is back to this thing we've talked about often in these discussions, that's the socialization piece. You know, you may be able to sit at home in your apartment and do your work per yeah, se, yeah. but you don't see see your comrades, you don't get to socialize, yeah. and you don't have those informal discussions over a salad or a sandwich at lunch that really might give you an idea about something you want to do in the afternoon. Yes. So so the the professional dislocation, particularly working remotely. I think that the jury's out. It's not all bad. Yeah. A lot. There's been a lot of efficiencies picked up, but yeah. I, I think the concept that people need to have some level of community within their professional life is being really tested. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that like it, it, this can be almost seen as a, a a pro and con in several ways. I think there, as you're saying, having lunch or having um, you know, small break points with your, your, your coworkers, those are, I've seen with our team is, those are glue points. Those are points of, 
of allowing ways to learn a little bit about your your coworker or something that they're into uh, hobbies and and for you connect on that sports to talk about the 49ers or talk about basketball or college football whatever um, kind of and and you, it's hard to do that in the same way when you're working from home but the other reverse side of it is potentially if you have kids or if you have um, you do gain some time right right and and opportunities to to do certain things with your kids that you you weren't able to do or you'd sometimes gain just time to maybe get that extra 30 minutes right. to to maybe do your workout uh, physically so it it all has and and those things to write down what what has shifted within that and, and i think one of the points that fall out of that those comments is that like all these things this is highly personal and i think one of the traps we fall into is what's the matter with me? You know, I'm working remotely, I'm working from home, everybody seems to be prosperous, everybody tells me how much they love to work from home, but, you know, I miss, I'm, I, I, I don't like it. Yeah. You know, per, for me personally, it's, it's, it's a problem. You know, the working from home for a nine months of the year is really a problem. So I think, we would encourage everyone to personalize each of these yes. things because at the end of the day, it really is, how is it working for you? Definitely. And, and this is knowing yourself, listening to yourself, and you know, on a professional level, uh, you know, some, service, some services and in, in, in industries are being disrupted in unrecognizable ways. Yeah. And, and so I think that gets back to this you know, that question of who moved my cheese? Yeah. You know, the, the, the world's not the same. I mean, the airport doesn't feel the same. I love to go to restaurants. That's not the same. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to see the 49ers play and I, I can't play it. They've closed the stadium. You know, I mean, really, my, I don't recognize my world. I don't recognize that's what people are feeling. Yes. You know, I don't recognize, and, and by the way, when is this thing going to be over? Yes. And w what does normal look like? Yeah. And and I think that I think it's going to affect people in the same vein financially. Yes. There's a big range of impact financially. And then we've talked about it already, but I think it it it, it warrants saying again. Uh, maybe this is the most profound thing: is the uh, the loss of village. Yes. You know the loss exactly. of your social connectivity yeah. and tissue. Uh, the loss of the uh, how your relationships manifest themselves. How do you maintain relationships? Uh, you know, friends and family that you may have seen on a very regular basis. Uh, you know, we're going to hit a one-year anniversary of not having dinner with that yeah. couple you used to see once a month. And and then how do you? What's that going to look like when everybody comes up for air? Yeah, and so I think there's another couple of legs to this, which which are going to be challenging. Excellent. Yeah, we're going to bring some some light to some some darkness that's been happening. So I think once you can see, you know, you can we can pull back the shades a little bit of what your future can be. Um, it's it's really exciting to kind of really get to the next. Uh, I think that's a good point. Uh, I think we we've been purposefully. Uh, direct yeah. and uh, trying to tell it as we see it. Uh, we're going to turn the corner in our next sessions and start talking about, well, given, given all this gloom and doom, <laughs> yes. what can I really do? <laughs> exactly. and, and, and that's important. I mean, we, we, see, we see pivoting in three and four to uh, hopefully by the time we get to the end of the four, you'll be feeling much better or feel like you've got tools to feel better. And that, that's really our goal.